Hello, and welcome back to my Q&A video series about the Pandas library in Python. And the question for today comes from an email I received from Clemens, who writes, uh, how do you create a data frame from scratch, i.e. without reading data from a file? This is handy when you want to create some toy data to play around with. There are several different ways to construct a data frame, and I find it confusing to pick the best method. Uh, I frequently need to construct a data frame with specific columns in a specific order. Okay, this is a great question, and I'm going to show you a handful of different ways to create some data frames, okay? Um, so uh, we'll start by importing pandas. And uh, the first way we're gonna do it is by using uh, a dictionary. We're gonna create a data frame from a dictionary. So we're gonna say pd.dataframe, and that is known as the data frame constructor. And we pass the constructor um, a dictionary. And here's the dictionary I'm going to pass. So the key is ID. The values are a list of 100, 101, 102, comma. And then the, the other key is color. And then the values are red, blue, and red. OK. So. Uh, dictionaries are key value pairs. This is the Python dictionary structure. And what you'll see is that the keys, ID and color, these strings, became the column names. And the values uh, became the values in those series in order. Okay. So uh, you'll notice that the columns did not show up in the same order in which I wrote them. And that's because the dictionary is an unordered data structure. And however, you can actually specify the ordering of columns if you need them in a specific order like Clemens had asked about. Okay, So if you want to do that, you just need to use the columns argument. Okay, So the first argument to uh, the data frame constructor is the data. The second argument you'll use here is columns equal. And you actually just say the names in the order you want them. So I'm going to say ID color. Okay. And when I do that, you'll see that it's now exactly in the order I specified. Okay. Uh, another thing you'll note is that the data frame constructor, uh, if you don't tell it an index, it will just use the default index, which is integers starting at zero. Okay. But let's say you have an index and you want to specify the index. Um, you can actually do that as well. Very simple. Just say index equals, and again, I'm going to pass it a list of strings. And um, you know, if the index were integers, you could pass it a list of integers. But I'm just going to say uh, a, uh, b, and c. Okay, and we'll run that and. Uh, you can see that that worked. So our rows are now labeled with the index of A, B, and C. Okay. So this is the really uh, this is probably the most common way to create a data frame for playing around with. Um, I'm going to save this as DF, and we're going to use it again later in the video. Okay. So what if your data is in a different shape? And here's what I mean. Let's say if we, um, we do pd.dataframe and we pass it a list of lists. Okay, So uh, I'm going to pass it a list of three lists. Okay, And I'm going to say 100 comma red, 101 comma blue, and 102 comma red. All right, so when I pass it a list of lists, the inner lists, uh, each of the inner lists gets treated as a row, and the rows get stacked on top of one another. So you can see the difference. When I pass a dictionary, uh, the key became the column name, and the value, uh, sorry, the value 
became the uh, series of values. Whereas if you want to do the same thing by passing a list of lists, you write out what's in each row, okay? And they just get stacked on top of one another like that, okay? Now, you'll notice, of course, that it used not only the default index, but the default columns of 0 and 1. So just like before, I can specify the columns. When I was doing it up here, it was because I wanted to specify the order. In this case, I'm specifying the columns just so that they can exist, okay? So ID and color, okay? So here is the same data frame as I created up here, okay? Just constructed in a different way. All right. So sometimes you don't have a dictionary or a list of lists. You have a NumPy array, and you want to convert a NumPy array to a data frame. So let's see how we do that. Um, first, I need one, so I'm going to create one. So we'll import NumPy as NP. And then um, what we want to do is take advantage of some random number functionality to create an array. And I'm going to say um, ARR, I'm going to store it, equals np.random.rand. And there's a lot of random number functionality. Um, I'll link to some documentation in the description below where you can read about it. But I'm going to say 4, 2. And let's go ahead and print it out. And what it does is creates a 4 by 2 NumPy array. Uh, meaning four rows by two columns, a four by two NumPy array of random numbers between zero and one, okay, the uniform distribution. Okay, so we've got an array, and let's say that I want to turn this into a data frame. How do I do it? You're probably not surprised that I'm just going to pass it to the data frame constructor. So pd.dataframe arr, and um, it's not, you know, by default, it's not going to have any column names. So I will go ahead and just add those um, just like before. And we'll just call them 1 and uh, 2. Um, okay. So that's how you convert a NumPy array to a data frame. Okay. At this point, you're probably wondering, well, when I, when I create toy data sets, I need to create a larger data frame. How can I do that? and without like typing out a huge amount of text. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna take advantage of some more NumPy functionality. There are lots of ways you can do this. But our goal uh, is to create a data frame of 10 rows and uh, two columns. And the columns are student IDs and some test scores, okay? So I'm gonna use the data frame constructor once again and I'm going to pass it a dictionary. And my first key will be student. These are student IDs. And instead of passing a list, I'm going to use the np.arange function, which stands for array range. It's very similar to Python's range function, except a range outputs a NumPy array. Doesn't really matter in this case. And I'm going to say I want student IDs from 100 to 110 by 1. And just like range, it's inclusive of the first, exclusive of the second, and this is the step, the step value. So step by 1. Okay, So that's the first column I'm going to create. And the second is going to be called test, and these are the test scores. And for this, uh, I'm going to say np.random.randint int. Okay. So I want random integers and I want random integers between 60 and 101, inclusive of 60, exclusive of 101, meaning it will not select 101. It will only go up to 100. And I want 10 of them. It's not by 10, it's 10 of them. Okay. So let's go ahead and run that. And this is our data frame. So you'll see that student and test became the column names, use the default index. And then the student column is 100 through 109 by ones. And the test scores are random integers between 60 and uh, 100 at the maximum. OK. 
Okay, so just 10 random integers. Um, as I said, I'll link to the documentation for these in the description below, and you can uh, read more about these and other random number functionality uh, that might be useful um, when creating these data frames. Now I'll say one more thing about uh, this, the data frame construction, which is that for any time you are creating a data frame, uh, you can actually chain it together with a dot set index if you have one of the columns that you want to set as the index. So I'm just going to say student. Run that. And now student is my index and test is one of the columns or the only column. Okay. So as always, we are going to end with a bonus. And the bonus is how do, do I create a new series and attach it to an existing data frame? Okay, so uh, let's use the series constructor, pd.series. And I'll just type it out and then we'll see the result. I'm gonna say round square, I'm just passing a list, and I'm gonna say index equals a list, c comma b, and name equals the string shape, okay? And I'm gonna save it as s, and then print it out. Okay, so this is the series we've created. You'll see that the first thing I pass it becomes the values of the series. The index obviously becomes the index of the series. They're really the identifiers for the rows of the series or the elements of the series. And the third thing is a name. And it's not obvious why I needed to do this, but you'll see in a moment. But it's, it's the identifier of the series. Okay, so this is a series I've created. Now, before I attach it to the existing data frame, let's review what that looks like. So this is DF. So you've got ID and color, ABC, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do to combine them uh, to combine the data frame and the series is to concatenate them. So I'm going to say pd.concat, a top level function, and I pass it a list of objects to concatenate. I'll just say df, comma, s. And then I want to concatenate side by side. So that's axis equals one. Whereas if I wanted to con concatenate uh, rows, it would be axis equals zero. Okay. So uh, there are three things I want you to notice about this, okay? So the first thing is that the name of the series right here became the column name when it was added to the data frame, okay? The second thing I want you to notice is that it was the series was aligned to the data frame by the index, okay? So you notice C is round, B is square, so C round, B square. So it aligned them. It didn't just drop them in in the order I passed it. It aligned them, okay? The third thing is obviously that A says NAN, not a number, which means it's a missing value. So pandas is saying, well, this shape series you added, it didn't tell me what the shape of A is, so I'm gonna identify it as a missing value, okay? So uh, if you wanna know more about the index and alignment, uh, I've got two videos about the index, which I will link to in the description below. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, please click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I'd love to hear from you, so feel free to leave me a comment or a question below, um, or check out my website and you can email me at dataschool.io. Um, but that's it, so thank you again, and I hope to see you again soon.